Good day! Hey, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. That's right, we're back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Mim, and for those of you that don't know me, I'm a medical doctor here in the UK, and as well as that, I like anime. I, I like anime. What can I say? I, I like it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why are you watching Code Black when you haven't even finished season one of Cells at Work? Well, look, this time I actually do have a decent reason for not fulfilling my promises. For the past few weeks, I've been fighting a very personal battle with coronavirus, but now I'm back. Things are back to normal. I'm feeling all right and I'm ready for this season. I'm sorry season one of Cells at Work and season two for that matter. I will get back to you at some point but today it's all about Code Black so without any further ado let's finally get into this bad boy. Damn boy we're already off to a much darker start. I love it. Keep going. Wait a minute. I know you. Oh. Hi. You're that guy from episode one of Cells at Work. But man, he's looking a little bit more lean and, and edgy. I have to point out, they have actually paid attention to the anatomy even of the virus as well. His forearm muscles look to be all right. You've got the radius there and the ulna on the other side. All right, so already there's quite a few differences compared to the original cells at work season one that I've seen so far. So first of all, they've had the gender of the red blood cell and the white blood cell switch around, which is fine. I'm sure no one's complaining about that. But as well as that, the corridor that they're in, which I guess is representing a blood vessel, looks a lot more dirty and dank than any that we've seen before. You can see these small brown lumps in the corridor, which could maybe represent some small plaques within the blood vessel. I was guessing before that the body in the previous cells at work episodes was that of a child, but I think this one is definitely of an older adult who looks to be in a lot worse shape than the previous person. Just a quick note, erythroblasts are the precursors to fully matured red blood cells. They're formed in the bone marrow and they still contain a nucleus. Once the red blood cell has matured properly, it loses its nucleus, which is why you get that kind of dipped saddle shape in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> As if the killer T cells in the previous episodes weren't hench enough, they've made them literally into Wolverine for this one. Why is everyone so sexy, Destiny? Sorry to ruin it for all of you guys, but if you're a male, then all of your cells will be male cells with regards to their DNA. So, fantasy's over, my dudes. You know what this is like? This is like starting off your life as a junior doctor. Everything seems so fine and dandy and so exciting. Everyone working together and then BAM! Global pandemic. By the way, red blood cells transport oxygen using hemoglobin, which can carry up to four molecules of oxygen per hemoglobin molecule. And each red blood cell can have up to 250 million molecules of hemoglobin, meaning that they can carry about a billion molecules of oxygen each. So those must be some damn heavy boxes. Oh my god, the analogies to to working as a doctor is actually real. Man, I remember first day working as a junior doctor, they just throw you on the ward and they're like, go on, get on with it, you're a doctor now. And it's just like, I need more training. It's like, no, you've had all the training, just get on with it. <laughs> but I guess it's like the same with anything. Most of what you learn is actually on the job itself. The aortic valve connects the left ventricle to the aorta, which is the main blood vessel that starts blood on its journey around the rest of the body, providing it with oxygenated blood. Sometimes the opening of this valve, just like all the other valves in the heart, can become restricted, and that's called aortic stenosis, and that can lead to some problems as the outflow of blood from the heart is reduced significantly. It's one of the easier abnormal sounds that you can hear using a stethoscope when you put it on someone's chest. <laughs> And they never saw each other ever again because they die after a few days. <laughs> what happened? What the hell happened? They used to be so cute and adorable. Why are they just a bunch of little brats now? <laughs> Uh, that's a typo on the subtitles, by the way. It's pepsin, not pespin. 
But yeah, pepsin's job is to mainly break down proteins into smaller components or peptides. This helps the body to absorb these nutrients more easily in the intestine later on and also allows for the absorption of some vitamins too. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Who the cell has time to remember someone's name? I like that. I like, that's a nice little touch, that is. A little bit offended. I feel like I feel like I'm in this anime. So the prioritization of blood supply in the body is constantly changing depending on different environmental factors or different things that are happening to the body at that time. For example, after you eat a meal, a lot of the blood supply gets directed to your digestive system to help improve absorption and digestion. And the body has a really smart way of prioritizing the most important things. So as they've depicted here, the extremities, so things like your skin, your toes, these are considered less important by the body. And things like the brain, the heart, the lungs, the digestive system, those kind of things are usually prioritized more for blood supply if there is a shortage for whatever reason. And shortages can be caused by things like infection, blood loss, anemia, amongst many others. You mentioned stress, but we don't know what kind of stress. Stress isn't always just the emotional type. Stress can be physical stress, um, like the things I mentioned earlier, infection, blood loss, anemia. It seems like the body that they're in is suffering from some kind of anemia if they've got a shortage of red blood cells. There's many different types of anemia, but one of the most common ones is iron deficiency anemia, where your body produces less blood cells because of a lack of iron. And the red blood cells that your body does manage to produce end up looking very small and paler in color in comparison to a healthy individual's red blood cells. In medical terms, we call this a microcytic hypochromic anemia. But now that I think about it, their coats are still a very deep red color, so maybe this isn't iron deficiency anemia. <laughs> So traditionally, we group cholesterol into good and bad cholesterol. I'm doing this because your body does still use some bad cholesterol. But the reason it's given that term is because higher amounts of the LDL or low density lipids can actually make it more likely for you to get plaques in your blood vessels. These plaques can technically build up in any blood vessel anywhere in the body, but they cause the most concern when they build up in places like the blood vessels supplying blood to the heart or the blood vessels in your brain where they can cause things like heart attacks and strokes. The Good cholesterol is known as high density lipids or HDLs, and they play a bit less of a significant role when it comes to plaque buildup in the blood vessels. <laughs> Man, I love this change in art style, the kind of etched and cell shader design really gives it a more kind of dark and broody feeling. <laughs> Uh, in reality, no. No break. Red blood cells have no break. No matter how healthy or unhealthy you are, they just keep on going until they die, literally. That's their life. That's their one job. <laughs> So carbon monoxide is what's known as a competitive inhibitor to oxygen when it comes to hemoglobin, which means that they'll both compete for the same space in the hemoglobin structure. On top of that, carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin much more easily than oxygen does. So if there is carbon monoxide in the picture, things can turn bad pretty quickly. I like how they showed the red blood cell turning that kind of pink or what we call cherry red color. That actually happens in humans if you die from carbon monoxide poisoning. So... A little bit of a dark touch there, but accurate, I guess. We know this guy, we know this guy. We've seen him before, episode one of Cells at Work, the first season. But back in that episode, he was almost comical. This one, it looks like it's a little bit more serious. If your body's less healthy, then it's more susceptible to more serious infections. And that can be due to a multitude of things like diabetes, anemia, simply a poor diet with a lack of nutrients and vitamins. It takes a lot to maintain a healthy immune system. So it's a good idea to try and keep things going smoothly before they get this bad. <laughs> So not all white blood cells are neutrophils, but all neutrophils are white blood cells. Just wanted to clear that up in case there's any confusion. So he mentioned necrosis. Necrosis is basically cell death. But before you get to that point, you have something called ischemia, which is a word that we use to describe a lack of oxygen at a certain part of the body. Ischemia can potentially be reversible, but once you reach necrosis and the cell dies, that's usually a one-way street. 
What this veteran red blood cells saying is completely true. Red blood cells give up their nucleus, they give up their powerhouses, they give up their organelles, all so that they can transport oxygen for us. What would we do without them? Die. So we actually have two carotid arteries, one on each side of your neck, and those are the arteries that you can feel the pulse for. Quick pro tip for if you're ever in a situation where you need to check someone's pulse, don't do this because they'll black out. It's a mistake that you sometimes see medical students doing when they're practicing resuscitation techniques. And one person is feeling for a pulse on one side and the other one comes along and feels on the other. And it's like, well, if you do this, there's no blood going up, is it? Because you're compressing it on both sides. They're dead. If they weren't before, they are now. That is the best depiction of an alveolus that I've ever seen. <laughs> That's amazing. The alveolus, as we've talked about in a previous episode, is where the gas exchange occurs between the blood and the air. So red blood cells can exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen while they're in the capillaries and then transport that oxygenated blood back to the heart to be pumped around the rest of the body. <laughs> Smoking is one of the most significant reversible causes of morbidity in humans, which means that if you quit smoking, if you are already a smoker, your health drastically improves and your risk of developing a lot of diseases is significantly reduced. It's quite interesting actually, if you do quit smoking, within just a few weeks, a lot of your lung function actually does start to improve. And depending on how much and how long you smoke for before you quit, after a few months or a few years, your lung function can actually get back to a pretty decent level, comparable to someone with a healthy set of lungs who's never smoked before. And there's a lot of debate about vaping, but at the end of the day, it doesn't contain tar and carbon monoxide like cigarettes do, so it is still technically healthier than smoking. Obviously nothing beats fresh air. Man, what an episode! Code Black, what a start to the season. It's definitely a lot darker than the episodes of Cells at Work that I've seen from the first season. But anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please do leave a like and leave a comment. Let me know what you think in comparison to season one of Cells at Work, if you've seen that already. I have watched a few episodes from that season. Um, there's a link up there if you want to see the playlist for that. And subscribe if you want to see me react to the future episodes, which I'm definitely going to do. 96% of you are not subscribed, man. We need to at least turn those numbers around. In the meantime, I'll see you guys over on Twitch, where I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at about 9 p.m. UK time. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Peace.